Hi everyone, we're here today with the fairly new Photo Deox Fusion Nikon 2 Sony E-mount adapter. And it looks like this comes in this little um, case here, it's just a cardboard thingy. Um, this is a smart adapter, which means it communicates the autofocus, auto exposure information to the camera and allows the lenses to AFAE and indeed image stabilize on E-mount bodies, such as this thing, an A6300. What happens if you want to use some of the brighter or indeed more commonly available and therefore cheaper secondhand uh, Nikon lenses or you want to fill in the gaps that Sony haven't got to yet? Let's have a look at this adapter and see how it does the job. As you can see, we've got a range of lenses here, everything that you might have. So we've we tried to get sort of one or two lenses from each sort of group that you might use. You know, in another video, we'll have a look at how these work on, on the FS7. So first off, here's the adapter. Turns up, it's got caps on either side. Let's pop them on. Very nice, positive lock on there. Let's go wide to close. So we've got the really, really nice, brand new Nikon 20 millimeter F1.8. Okay, we're gonna come on in manual photo mode at the moment. So we're in autofocus, bang, wow. Uh, and we are getting full control of the aperture. The autofocus is stunningly fast, uh, works absolutely brilliantly. Let's have a look in video mode. Oh, it's taking a bit longer to focus there. It is still focusing, but it is doing it a lot slower and not quite as precisely. The 50 millimeter. Now this is a Sigma lens, not a Nikon. So it's a third party manufacturer. We are on here. This is F 1.4. Again, really nice and bright. Start off in photo mode. Wow. Bang. That's pretty fast. Not quite as fast as it might be on a Nikon body, perhaps, but still excellent. All the focus points are visible. Yeah, it looks great. All the data and the aperture control is happening via the aperture wheel. So I can change this and as you can see, the aperture is changing on the lens as I rotate the wheel. So that's great, which means that the EXIF data, the lens data is being communicated to the camera from the lens via the adapter perfectly well. So yeah, that looks really good. Let's have a look in video mode. As with the 20 mil, this is not happily finding focus immediately and this is with me pressing the button it's not doing it continuous focus like it does with the sony lenses uh, yeah so that's not that's not particularly good for video uh, let's try a zoom lens this is the nikon 18105 3.5 to 5.6 it's a pretty standard uh, lens that comes with a lot of the DX cameras. So remember this is a DX lens. So this is a crop chip lens and of course the a6300 here is a crop chip camera This lens is not the fastest to focus lens in the first place and the relative speed Decrease is about the same using the adapter uh, However, it's pretty accurate That's about a second if not quicker so still usable for most photo situations and most people who'd want to use it. So that's, that's pretty good. I'm tempted not to bother with video mode anymore because we've proved that even on the posh lenses, doesn't really like it. So, but let's have a look. Yeah, it's about the same. It sort of hunts at the end. It, it basically finds focus and then it takes a few seconds to sort of creep and check it. And it's not necessarily ending up quite as in focus or sharp as it, as it needs to be. Okay, this is the Nikon 28 to 300 possibly my favorite lens ever because it does everything it replaces a whole bag full of lenses uh, is fairly compact and light this has got vibration reduction active and standard vr in here so we're going to have a have a look at how that vibration reduction works as well so let's have a look here that looks like that stabilizer is working pretty well focus is pretty good uh, but close focus is good distance focus is fair Really good, actually, that's pretty good. That's better than I thought it was gonna be on that lens, actually. Let's go to video mode. Yeah, all, I pretty much can say that autofocus on video mode isn't really working. 
I know you're all going to have a go at me, by the way, for putting my lenses down without the caps on, but, you know, we've got to get on with this. Now we go to my other favourite lens, which is the Nikon 80-200. to This is an older version, f2.8. Yeah, pretty solid. Yeah, there's no vibration reduction in this lens, so that looks pretty wobbly, but it's focusing quick. Focusing from close to far is swift and accurate, like the other one. So, actually, that's pretty good, and that, with the collar that way... The balance point is on the, right on the lens there, so even for hand holding without using the viewfinder, that's pretty comfortable. So they all seem to work really very happily uh, in stills mode, photo mode, uh, but video mode uh, has been a rather a crushing disappointment. I was hoping to use some of my Nikon lenses for video with some AF, because occasionally that is really quite useful. However don't write off the advantage of auto exposure and indeed the EXIF data that the lens is now transmitting to the camera via the adapter. You get all your shutter speed, aperture, and that means that you can you know, do really good accurate analysis and indeed matching situations, all that kind of stuff. In terms of what it does for these Nikon lenses, it's meant that I can shoot with them with photos. And that's actually, that's brilliant. Because even if I'm using my big Nikon camera as the main camera, it means that I can only, t only need to take one bag of lenses and I've got two bodies. I've got a backup body or a second body. And um, actually that's really useful. And to know that I can use those reliably, happily at 24 megapixels with a much smaller camera is, is really useful. Bit disappointed by the video performance on the autofocus because that's something that I, I, I could have used. But otherwise, it's actually worked a hell of a lot better than I was expecting it. So I've actually been really pleasantly surprised by how well this adapter has worked overall. Um, stills mode is, is the main thing I would be using it for because mainly for video, I'm manual focusing anyway. So it's not really an issue for me. Some people it will be. So in those places where Sony lenses haven't quite caught up yet, either in quality f-stop or price for example the sony 80 to 200 uh f 2.8 is about two and a half thousand pounds this nikon old nikon f 2.8 you can get these for five or six hundred quid plus the three or four hundred that this cost is still under a thousand pounds so overall Really impressed with the autofocus, auto exposure, uh, iris control, EXIF data transfer, and indeed the image stabilizer uh, functionality of this adapter. Disappointed that the AF doesn't work so well, um, or indeed usably, in video mode on the 6300 here. But actually, compared to what the rest of this does, which is make all of these lenses available to me at a fraction of the cost of replacing them all, with the Sony equivalents. If you're looking for a fast auto-focusing adapter to use your Nikon lenses on for video, this is not it. I was expecting to be disappointed, and for video I am a bit, but in realist realistically I don't auto-focus very often in video at all. So that's not that important to me. Overall, really impressed. So I hope that's been interesting, and thanks for watching.